nice when you can have people over and have them sort of serve themselves. So have some kind of a bar, like a burger bar or a salad bar. Well, we're making a Caesar bar, but this has nothing to do with salads. No. No, this no, no. This is the perfect kind of brunch thing because it's like a cocktail hour meets charcuterie. Okay. Right? And it's like you kind of serve yourself and feed yourself. And these are big in the States, except for they do their Bloody Marys. We're going to make it the Caesar, which is cool. Yeah. But it's like the coolest thing ever because... The original Caesar was 1969, and it's only really big in Canada. It really doesn't go anywhere else. Okay. And the big difference is there's actually clam juice in the tomato juice. And only in Canada do we use the clam well, tomato juice. They tried juice. in other places, but it really doesn't happen. Yeah, okay. They but don't have it, that thing. They kind of go clam juice, right? <laughs> but in Canada, um, last year we as Canadians consumed 350 million Caesars. Really? That's a lot of clam juice. We have a problem. It's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> or we really They're like fantastic. Caesars. It's a cold country, you know, we got to stay warm. But wow. a lot of what people don't know is when the, the Clamato first came out, they actually had a beef version called Beefalo. Oh, no. <laughs> so it was beef juice yeah. with tomato juice, which I think is amazing. Oh. I can't believe clam won. Oh, man, I can believe clam won. <laughs> Okay, so this is sort of, so it's like, I didn't realize Caesars were a Canadian thing, and I love that. It makes sense to do this on our Canada Day party. What are we going to put in? So or the, what are our So the standard recipe is vodka, Clamato, yeah. and Worcestershire yeah. with a lime and celery. But okay. because it's be such a popular thing, there's all kinds of variations. So I brought, what did I see, extra clam juice. I brought pickle juice. I brought oh. the beef, just so if anyone wants to go back to the beef alone, there you go got it. I got you hooked up. That's a meal. Um, I got lemon juice, mm -hmm. Worcestershire horseradish chilies. Now that's the base of the cocktail. Okay. And then we can talk about the rim. I mean, you gotta have a great rim. Yes. So you always like, here, just dip your glass there in the lemon juice first. Here we okay. go, like this. And then what you wanna do is you wanna have something with sides because your rim goes a lot farther. Okay. And a nice little treat, if you had a party like this, you could actually make your own custom rim. This one has mint and fennel in it, which oh, is cool. kind of cool, garlic, a uh, little bit of dried thyme. And then you could package it and give everyone a little rim on the way home. You know what's cool about this? So if you're doing a Caesar bar, you're basically giving everyone a meal. I mean, you, this is food in a glass. So you don't necessarily have to do the cooking because you're putting all sorts of fun things. <laughs> it's very is that, true. Is that bad advice? No, it's great advice. Maybe it's bring out a planning. loaf of bread. I don't know. But look at all of the food. Well, then That's we can carry on to this side. So then I brought like Canadian oysters. I brought yeah. some uh, some Parmesan crusted salami. I brought little mini pizzas because that's my favorite food. That's cute. And a little garnish there, right? Yes. And then we've got like the pickles and we've got the caprese salads. Vegetarians, hey, help yourself. Just right. don't have the beef. There you go. Um, is pickles, all that kind of stuff. And and the bottom line is you get to build your own. So I like that you stuck with Canadian, even Canadian vodka, which a lot of people uh, are, don't know about. But you're saying if we all just drank Canadian vodka, we'd have an instantly thousands of jobs created it's in true. this country. It's very true. Switch to and Canadian I, I vodka. I think that everyone has to think like that, even when you go like to your markets and everywhere else. If you yeah. buy Canadian, if you look at the apples at the grocery store and you buy Canadian instead of US, you're helping out your neighbors. Yeah, you absolutely are. Now, both of you are chefs that really pride yourself on using local. Devin, you say it all the time on the show. You pick your own stuff, you grow your own stuff, you go with things that are local because it's important to you. Local, sustainable, it's just being responsible. Mm -hmm. And also, like, what's better than fresh food? You can never substitute fresh food and fresh flavor. Yeah. Very important for your health, maintaining a healthy diet. Like, it's just, it's just a no-brainer for me. It's a no-brainer, but sadly, so many people in this country don't have access to fresh local food. We're lucky. If you're in any major mm. center in Canada, you can probably go to a grocery store, a deli, a fishmonger. You can get stuff that's local. So many people live north in Canada, no access to fresh produce. Food Fair is please. super expensive because you can't get it in there unless it's shipped in. And I know a, a lot of companies are starting to take a stand against that, including Hellman's. They've got a real food movement going on so that they can start getting people to be a little bit more sustainable, having their own greenhouses, growing their own things, their own herbs, their own produce, so that they can have access to the same things that we have in all of these big cities. It's, it's important. It's hard to believe it's my favorite place to go, whether it's the grocery store, the fishmonger, the butcher shop. It's just like, it to be not have those things, it's yeah. just, it's got to be tough. So it is, it is tough, and it's, bad, and, and it's not great for your diet, right, if no. you don't have access to fresh stuff, like Devin says. Okay, so we've got all of our fresh Canadian uh, items here. How are we going to put it all together? Okay. So number one, rim the glass first. I see some people that try to rim the glass after they put the ice in. <laughs> it's not going to It doesn't work. work. It doesn't work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Number two, remember, ice is the secret. Right, so always go heavy on the ice. The standard 
recipe is one and a half ounces for six ounces of clamato. Oh, that was going to shuck me some oysters. I might have went a little heavy. <laughs> I might have went too, but that's okay. But you're supporting Canadians. I'm going to so. support the Canadians. Okay. Yeah. Now, I find clamato a little sweet, so I always find the secret to a like, really, really awesome cocktail is some, some vinegar, some bitterness, and I've got some pickle juice here. Oh, wow. So you get the flavor from the pickles, the garlic, the spices, that kind of stuff. Okay. And then go, listen, heavy on the Worcestershire. Never mind this three drips. I mean, make it a little dark down there. That's beautiful. Okay. We're looking at brunch <laughs> little, right here, little people. little horseradish, right? Why don't you just want to put, like, throw some bacon in there or something? A little homemade chili. That's the only thing I didn't bring because I thought it was too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> And then check it out, it's really not so much about the clam juice. I mean, you know, we got Just like the six ounces in there like that. But now, it's like everyone that, that is a Caesar fanatic, they have their little thing. I want more spice. I want less right. spice. Instead of standing there and making cocktails for everyone all day, set it up. Yeah. They can make their own. And if it's terrible, they have to, they have to drink it. That's right. Because you made it. It's on them. Right? You put it in there. There you go. What so you then, expect? look at this. Here's what we're going to do. What is that? That's a little bit of Parmesan crusted... Um, Salami. Oh, okay. A little bit of my lunch. <laughs> little bit just of take lunch. that out of the fridge. Then I've got an oyster, so here's my favorite oh, thing. Oh, so an got oyster. A you do have a meal going on. Surf and turf going on, right? You mean like the only problem is Look to get the that. dozen oysters, you have to have a dozen Caesars. That's true. It might not be a problem. Well, just get the, I mean, if you have everything out there for people to serve themselves, uh, they can do their own little surf and turf if they feel like it. And what I, oh my gosh, look at this. What'd you do here? We got a little <laughs> uh, prosciutto wrapped. Cucumber. Oh my god, I need a That's knife and a right. fork. How am I and then look it? Wait, I got a salad. You're, you got your greens. I got salad. little micro greens look there. Look at that. Right? I'm just going to knock this back right now. No problem. I'll have a shrimp in my eye. <laughs> and then <laughs> some nice straw. She's your own adventure. Give it up for Chef Randy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Sitting on Gautier for this awesome recipe. Let's go to break. More coming up.